Hello, hello, it is Sanal. And once again, I am here, barely. But anyway, <laughs> I'm fighting with my computer once again, y'all. I gotta breathe. So I'm having an amazing day and um, wishing I was in Jamaica, actually, because I've heard that the um, internet in Jamaica is actually better than it is here in the U.S. And so <laughs> wherever there is good internet is where I want to go. Well, I hope you guys are having an amazing day and you're not having any problems with the internet like I am. Um, but all of that aside, um, there are some amazing things that are happening all over the world and amazing things, especially with Black expats, um, that are happening in Jamaica. By the way, hi, I'm Sanal. And welcome, welcome to the broadcast. I'm I'm so excited about today. I I didn't get any sleep last night because I couldn't sleep thinking about all the amazing things that we're going to talk about today with our guest, um, Misty Memphis. And uh, I'm just so excited. Here, um, I'm Sanal. <laughs> Once again, I'm the author of Love the New Currency, and I really believe we're in a different season, in a different time where our dreams, our aspirations, and our love for each other and connection to who we are as African Americans and as amazing people is what's going to fuel the world and what is fueling the world. So welcome everyone. Welcome. Welcome to those of you who are watching. Welcome um, out in the, um, who are in here within the chat with us. And those of you who all, because I, I know how you are, um, those of you all who are watching, but you're not in the chat with us, but you're just watching because you're at work or whatever's going on. Welcome. And I'm, I'm so glad you're here. Welcome to you uh, for um, for being here. And for the, all of you all who are going to be watching the re replay, welcome, welcome. And thank you um, for being here. Go ahead and like uh, and um, hit the thumbs up, hit the um, notification bell so you're notified whenever I have a broadcast. And then um, go ahead and hop on over to Facebook and join Capital of Negril, which is, uh, I'm sorry, um, yeah, Capital of Casual Negril, Jamaica. Okay. Let me say that again. Capital of Casual Negril, Jamaica, and join Misty's group. Okay. Because um, you definitely want to join her group. And be a part of all the amazing, beautiful, wonderful things that are going on. I'm going to have all the links below, just like before, uh, because she's been here. She's been a guest with us before. And so I'm going to have all the links below to her group. So just check back um, so you can connect with her. And you can learn about Jamaica, whether you're coming to visit or you're just coming for the rest of your life <laughs> to enjoy your having, yourself and have an amazing, um, wonderful life for you and your family. Um, Misty has all the information that you need, and so you definitely want to connect with her. All right, well, I'm going to um, give you guys a little bit more time um, to come in, and I'm going to do something really quick that I need to do, uh, which is uh, share this with everyone, because I definitely don't want you... Um, I don't want you to miss this. And so welcome, welcome, welcome. If you haven't already, go ahead and check out uh, my past conversation. I had a conversation before with Misty. She's in the Capital um, of Casual Negril playlist. And so um, check out that video where she talks about her amazing experience of moving to Negril. So that'll bring you up to date. And then, of course, uh, check out this video and be, be sure to share it with a friend. Well, let's go ahead and bring our guest in. She is amazing. She's a former teacher. She is the founder of Capital of Casual Negril with several thousand um, guests who are in there. I, call, I always call them guests, but several thousand members um, and fam who are more like family. And so if you want to learn about Negril, um, and you want to learn about Jamaica, this is the place that you want to be. Um, and this is the person that you want to be connected to. So welcome, drum roll, please welcome, welcome Misty Memphis um, to our family. Hello. I so enjoy watching your little preamble. <laughs> <laughs> my husband says that my opening and my clothes are, um, you can tell that my grandfather was a Baptist preacher. 
Cause I, I at the close, <laughs> I'll, <laughs> I'll close about five times. It's just like, you know, you just close it and you just close it. But welcome. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Hi, sweetheart. How are you? I'm, I'm pretty good. <laughs> good. You look beautiful. You look absolutely. Girl, um, I know you better. I, was, I said, you better get those technical difficulties worked out because I put on lipstick today and I don't do that anymore. <laughs> I was coming in coming out we've been i've been doing this for the last hour like coming in coming out trying yeah. to i've been like, sitting watching you <laughs> what is going on i'm like what know. is going on today <laughs> okay memphis let's get it together let's okay get, let's, let's get it together <laughs> well i wanted to do this and you and i talked and we had an amazing conversation and of course everyone i talked to us talking to um everyone who's ever been touched or impacted by you in any way has nothing but beautiful things today to say. I was talking to Tasha Pierre yesterday about um, her travels. And if you haven't watched that broadcast, please do everyone. But I was talking to her yesterday and I mentioned um, you and she was, oh, Miss Stephen Miss Whitney, I love her. She's so amazing. And then we went on and um, just talked about all the amazing things that you're doing in Jamaica. And I was, she was like, are, you know, are you connected to her? And I was like, yes, I am. And she talked about how you have been featured in the group. Um, and are, you're the, her go-to person in Black Express from all over the world um, for anyone who wants to move um, to Jamaica. And so I was sitting there thinking um, after talking with her and I was like, well, you know, the big question is because you have as expats, as world travelers, mm -hmm. we have, we can go anywhere we want to go in the world. Yeah. But you chose Jamaica. I'm choosing Jamaica. So many people are choosing Jamaica. And so um, for the people who um, are coming in and who um, have been hidden under a rock somewhere and don't just know how beautiful and amazing Jamaica is. Why Jamaica? This is, you know, this is, you know, important because we can go anywhere. So for you, we're going to kind of list maybe our top 10 or how many, you know, everything. And we'll just go through and discuss them. But why, why, why Jamaica? Why beautiful Jamaica? Okay. So it, it started as a vacation that ended up being a lifetime pursuit. Once I got back to the United States from that first trip in April of 2000, I went back to work at East High School and only half of me was there working. The other half was somewhere else and I didn't know where. Mm. And finally, one of my coworkers just stopped me in the hallway and she actually is one that I didn't interact with all that much. Can I put it like that? Mm. I, didn't feel, I didn't feel particularly close to her or anything. I didn't think she cared about me. And she just grabbed me by the arm and she said, Miss Williams, what's wrong? You don't seem the same anymore. Something is wrong. What's wrong? And I, I stood there in the hallway thinking, and I was just, it felt like a, a movie running through my head. And I said, well, maybe I just want to go back to Jamaica. And she said, well, have you thought about getting an airplane ticket and making a hotel reservation and going back. And I'll never forget as long as I live my answer. Oh, people can go on vacation more than once a year. <laughs> That's how limited I was. M Memphis and, and, and coming up in 1951 can put you into a little box. That's a mental. I, I always, I often think of, um, I believe it was Marcus Garvey or was it Haile Selassie that said, emancipate yourself from mental slavery. I think it was Marcus Garvey. And uh, Bob Marley turned it into a song lyric. Emancipate yourself from mental slavery. I was a mental slave. Mm. All I, I thought all one was supposed to do is go to work, be a good girl, be a good citizen, vote in elections and go on vacation once a year. That was life. I, it, it didn't even occur to me that you could go more than once a year. That's how regimented and brainwashed, literally, mm -hmm. I was. So um, I begged a million people to go with me. I even offered to pay for somebody to go. And 
everybody was, no, no, I don't want to go. And the girl who originally went with me has never been back. She said, there are more places in the world. So I booked that ticket and I went back and oh my goodness, that was kind of it. But here are some of my, you mentioned top 10. I don't know if I can come up with 10, but here are reasons why I would say one would choose Jamaica. Number one, close. Before part. you, before, oh, before okay. you go there, because that, <laughs> that was so amazing. And mm -hmm. one, of, one, of, one of the things that I'm learning so much I, you know, about this is, and I and I said I'm going to do a video. I don't know what I'm going to call it. At first, I'm going to mm -hmm. call it "Why We Won't," you know, leave our hood. I don't know. Maybe that's not a good title. But <laughs> I was like, "Why we won't leave?" It's, it's a comfort zone. It it's is. A, it's a comfort zone, and you know, you can think of a, a lot of ladies who offer to take, or men who offer to take Jamaican people to the U.S. And then at the last minute, they freeze because they think, "Oh, I'm going to this." foreign place where I don't know anybody and I don't know my way around and I can't drive and I can't work yet and I don't know if I can get this or that there and they, they're they scared to leave their comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we're not I was, you know, saying yesterday, I was saying um, with Tasha, I was saying you know, there are people, and you know Memphis well, that mm -hmm. who live in the Memphis area and who haven't even gone to Carnival? They haven't even gone to South Haven, even to the new mall. Um, they have not even, I mean, I, I sit downtown and I see people going across the bridge to Arkansas um, quite a bit. And it's like, they don't even go and explore just 10, 15 minutes um, to an, another state or even another city. It's like, people are like, I've talked to people living in Memphis. And they're like, I don't even know how to get there. And I'm like, I mean, it's just not <laughs> well, popular. Well, popular will take you, but part. Mm -hmm. There's so many streets that are just straight. Um, why? Why do you think that is that we are so just focused um, on where we live? No, where we're no matter where we are, where we live in America, and why we can't well, you know, yeah. get out of that? Because we gotta gotta attack or, or really kind of talk about mindset before we can get on this journey. Okay, let's keep it real. <laughs> For black people, it is not just a matter of preference or um, habit. It's a matter of safety. Mm. You want to stay where you feel the most safe. You're surrounded by your people. That your you people. don't you don't think the enemy is going to come in as quickly to that particular hood. Um, and what would they want there? So. You stay, you, you mentally stay there in that little cocoon because it keeps you alive. Mm. And it might very well be a fact in many cases. Mm. You said it may be a fact. It may not even be something that's unreal. Mm -hmm. It just might be truly a fact of why why you need to or stay, why you want to stay close. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's very interesting. And most of us don't even own a passport. Like we don't even own own a passport. We have no idea how. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, you hit up on a subject with me. I just I I would love to see. Um, I, this is what I say to people. You get your this, these are the important pieces of paper in your life. Your birth certificate is given to you. You are not even aware that you're a person yet. That's your first important piece of paper. You have a social security number, and then at 16, you get the magic driver's license. And then most people stop right there. And I say to black people, get you a passport. Please do not wait until it's time for the cruise or somebody made travel arrangements and now you all are going somewhere. Get the passport. Keep it current. Look at it sometimes. Be sure that it's not within six months of expiring because a lot of people don't know that you can't really travel on a passport that's within six months of expiring. They just figure I got a passport. And you look at it, they get to the airport and they get turned around. Mm. So uh, the passport, when you get your passport, I say you're a big boy or girl. Now you're a citizen of the world. I don't care if you don't ever get to use it. Get one. Because you don't know what might happen. And you might need to get on a plane and get on up out of here. Right. 
and that that is my point get it and, and get have it. it and i love how you put it it's one of those you know top three documents you got your birth certificate which you don't even you know um, you know you have one <laughs> right social security card social mm -hmm. security card but you can't do anything um without your social security security card and then your driver's license which mm -hmm. some people can't even drive so that may or may not have that mm -hmm. um and that's you know that's your choice um i like to be able to drive in case i need to go in case i need to move so and then your passport you yeah. these are the things but we're not we're we're not put onto that we're not we're not we're not taught that at all do you know that there was a time when black people were not allowed to have a passport Oh, now we're hitting on something. So did you know that by going to get your passport, just like you go to get your voter registration card, it is a nod to those in the past who made it possible for you to now have this document? It is a right. It is a right that you have as a citizen of the world. Just having that, I helped, I helped a young Jamaican guy get his passport. He didn't have his Jamaican passport. Oh my goodness. And you could have seen him when he got that passport. He took it to work. He showed it to everybody. He he walked around. You know, it's probably not a good idea to carry your passport around with because you might lose it. But uh uh, he didn't leave the house without it because he might need to flash it to somebody. Wasn't going anywhere. <laughs> Just proud that he had his passport. I wish we had that attitude about a passport. It's the key to the world. It's the key to the world. And now, now, you know, now that you have those keys, okay, so you got your keys, you got your keys to the world, you can go anywhere that you want to go. Why do you make it? Why is it <laughs> over and over? Proximity to the United States. At the time that I made my transition to Jamaica, I still had a living mom and a, a living older uncle, the last two of the 12 of my grandmother. And I needed easy access to get back here quickly if they needed me. Um, and then also just having gone to Tokyo, Japan to see my daughter and experienced a 17 hour flight, that little two hours and 45 minutes to Jamaica feels like nothing. So I like that. So close proximity, English speaking country. Um, I know a lot of us are going to Portugal and, and all kinds of places. And I, I admire you. I have no basis for the Spanish language. I have no basis for French or German. My daughter living in Tokyo has pointed out to me how you can be in a language desert. She knows enough Japanese to function, but she just delights when someone from home comes and she can speak English and relate to that person. So I, I love that it was an English speaking country. Uh, for me, the biggest draw was that it is a 98% or more, I think it's really 99 point something black country. We are in okay. charge. We, we, are, we are running it. Um, it was wonderful for me to look around and see all of those pretty black girls with the clipboard walking around in charge of everything and all of those men standing tall and proud in charge of themselves, in charge of their business. Um, it was just delightful to me to see black people everywhere, pretty much. Um, the other people I saw were tourists like myself, you know, mm -hmm. and they were just there maybe temporarily and coming and going. It was just a refreshing thing for me to see black people in charge. And so that, that was probably number one at the top of my list. It does have good infrastructure depending on where you choose to live. Of course, if you know, you, you go get yourself a house on the side of the hill somewhere and you want the, the dream of looking out at the vistas and you just you and your man or just you, uh, you're not going to have the great internet and the great water system and the great electricity maybe that that you crave. But then again, you can locate yourself in Kingston or Montego Bay and have all of that, including the hardwood floors, the granite countertops and the uh, dishwasher and the uh, stainless steel appliances. It just depends what you want. And um, 
the friendly nature of the people was a is a biggie for me. Yeah, it, it's like walking back into the '60s in America when we used to speak to each other, and we used to relate to each other, and we used to love each other. And it was black is beautiful, and hey brother, hey sister, you know, you have to greet people in Jamaica. You have to speak. You can't just walk by folks and and, and be in your little cocoon. All of that, all of that appealed to me. It was like living my best years over again in Jamaica. So I'm writing my notes. So I, I'm gonna, just, I, I'm a good student. So when you see me looking away, guys, I, I just want you to know. You see me looking down, looking away. I'm, 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 I'm taking the notes because I want to be a good student. Um, Misty Memphis is here. Um, Misty Memphis 101. <laughs> right, Misty Memphis. Hey, look, this is Misty Memphis 101. Let me write that down. That is really <laughs> and we have, um, you don't realize. I really want you to really, guys, if you're listening, I really want you to really see and understand. You may not realize just how um, amazing we are in this time where we can share this knowledge and where we can actually have this opportunity to have an expert, someone who's lived there. I'm not because sometimes you'll see um, and, I, and I love everyone who moves to Jamaica and then then shares their story. I think it's amazing and beautiful. But when you have someone who's been there for years and they're taking their time to share their knowledge, their wisdom, and their expertise, this is when you listen. I had someone to tell me, I asked a question um, about uh, teaching abroad. And so these, these are my notes. And so I was asking a person about teaching abroad and a person politely told me that um, I see, they were saying, I see, sister, that you are um, listening to a lot of people, but I want you to listen to the people who have been there for at least five years or more. <laughs> and I got so tickled. I mean, I really got so tickled. I didn't know what to do because in my mind, that's what I'm do I was doing. But of course, I'm um, Memphis nice. I'm Mid-South polite. And so everyone who was giving me um, their wisdom, I was saying, thank you. You know, I really appreciate it. But when you have someone like Misty Memphis, who's been there, who's lived there and who has done more at this <laughs> amazing woman has done more to help the actual um, tourism and the tourism industry from helping local businesses promote their businesses, freely promote, freely mm -hmm. share their businesses, and then really pushing them to be connected. So when a person will ask a question, I've noticed what one of the beautiful things that she does is she'll, if they ask a question, immediately she'll share, um, especially Black-owned businesses, Black-owned mm -hmm. businesses in Jamaica, and, and especially local-owned businesses right. to connect. So she's a connector. Right. She's a connector and she's an expert in her field um, of traveling, living, working, relocating, living in Jamaica. And when I say working in Jamaica, what I mean, you know, capital casual is work. I mean, I don't care what it, she's retired. It is. It is, it, so when I say talk about working in, in Jamaica. But all of this out is comes and pours out of her passion and out of her love for Jamaica. So I love having her on because she's such an expert. She's such an expert and just such a sweet, loving, um, hearted person. But this thing, when you're making your list and you're planning, mm -hmm. I want you to really, you know, because we've talked about planning, right, on this channel. Um, you guys know, we talked about how to plan your visit. We talked about, you know, asking you questions like, sorry, um, well, how's your replay, you know, your expat plan going your or your repat plan depending on where you're going um mm -hmm. or going back to but you know planning is so important and so these are the things you should be planning and you should be listing out what's your top 10 your top five what's important to you right close proximity to the u.s or where you wherever you're going to that's important to me because I have children who are still here in the U.S. So when she was saying that, I was like, oh, see, because that's my big thing. And then you had family at the time. 
right? You had an uncle and an aunt who were, who were still here. And then you had your child um, who is in Japan and then English speaking. How's your patois? Speaking of English speaking, how's your, <laughs> how, how is that going? Okay. So um, I personally think that we sound kind of silly trying to speak it. Um, and it almost borders on insulting. Can I say that? Mm-hmm. But but um, I've gotten a lot better at listening and understanding it. Well, one of my favorite stories. Here's a story for you. <laughs> I went up to Long Bay Beach Park to pick up some shells to make this beautiful mirror I made to go in my bathroom. And I, I took a roster friend with me. He, he was my um, engineer at the house that put things up and stuff. And we got in a route taxi because I, I got violently sick all of a sudden and I had to go home. So I'm sitting in the front with the driver and my roster friend got in the back. A few feet down the road, we picked up another roster. We got in the car in the middle and he was very talkative, you know. And then a few feet down the road, just so happened we picked up another roster. So we had three rosters in the back seat. I'm in the front. So the roster in the middle starts talking to my friend and he says, um, so I see you got your white lady. Uh, I've been looking for mine. I ain't found my white lady yet. Uh, that's that's what I want. I want a white lady. I, I really want a white lady to make my life better. And I, I, I and I see you found yours and everything. But he was saying it in a patois, you know, very fast. And he didn't think I understood what he was saying. And uh, when we got home, I asked uh, Everton, I said, uh, so I just want to ask you something. I said, is it like the goal of your life from birth to get a white lady to come in and swoop you up and make everything all right? And he said, you understood what we were saying? And I said, yeah, I said, but also, could you tell your friend that I am not a white lady? I'm African-American. And I get that. A, I get that a lot in Jamaica. I mean, a lot. And um, I'm used to it now. So it's just it's just what I have to deal with. But yeah, uh, I can understand what they're saying, but I don't want to attempt to try to say it because I, I know I sound silly. Thanks, so, thanks. You know. <laughs> Whenever I hear Petwa, I really listen <laughs> and I um, try to practice it on, on my hubby. And so he just kind of looks at me like, what are you doing? But whenever <laughs> I hear Petwa, I always it reminds me of some of the older Mississippians, um, mm-hmm. the former generations. I can hear Wagwan. I, I can hear mm-hmm. I can hear the ancestors. It's just kind of a lot of it, a lot of it is very similar, and we've lost that. I mean, my degree well, everywhere that we around the world that we were enslaved. We uh, developed a form of language that we could communicate that Masa wouldn't understand. And Patois is that in Jamaica. And um, actually in America, basically we weren't allowed to speak at all. So right. so developing a language wasn't uh, much of a... <laughs> no. But the good is Gilligoo, Gilligoochee, you know, in uh-huh. South Carolina, Gilligoo. Yeah. 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 They, have, they have one. And in, and in uh, New Orleans... Down in New Orleans, there's there's a form of Creole uh, pidgin language. So, yeah. But um, I want to tell you this. The further you get away from the grill and go up into the hills and get into the real Jamaica, Mm. trust me, you won't be able to catch one word when they're speaking Patois. You won't. uh Uh-uh. You can't catch it. You can't. See, that. that's sort of a watered-down version kind of that you hear when you get closer to the tourist area. Go up there in those hills, like around the Kingston area. You won't understand one word they're saying. That's that's the real patois that was developed for for uh, the uh, slave master not to understand. Mm. So, is it true that since we're here on talking about um, patois, is, is it true that you the prices are different for English speaking people? <laughs> and- Matter of fact, you don't have to open your mouth. When you walk up, they can look where you're dressed and, and the way, just the way you look. They can tell you're not Jamaican. Oh. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and you're going to get a different price, and you should because um, you can afford it. Hmm. You, can, you can afford it more. And what they're trying to do is give their fellow Jamaican a break 
and charge you accordingly or what they feel you can stay in. Can I put it like that? Yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know. You know what okay. they call it? Bullshit? They call it accent tax. Ah, you pay I know more. That. I heard that you pay more for these earrings than oh. a Jamaican lady would because it's accent tax. Ah, mm -hmm. interesting accent tax. Okay, so we gotta. I don't know. Put that as a note over there. Um, <laughs> asterisk that one because I got I got to learn more about that. Mm -hmm. Um, and then it has good infrastructure. Now I've talked to. Um, Throp, and he's assured us that he has good infrastructure. And I've actually, <laughs> actually mm -hmm. have um, been on a couple of his lives and talked to him. And I can assure you that their internet is much better than ours. <laughs> Mine is anyway here, 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 here in Memphis. My um, internet at my house in Jamaica. My locate. I don't know if it's my location, the road I'm on, whatever. But my internet at in Jamaica is better than my internet in Memphis. Yeah. Oh wow. Mm -hmm. And my cable so, TV is better over there. I have more channels for less money. Oh, your internet is better. My internet is better. My cable TV is better. Yeah. Cable. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Now, what was my? Oh, Kingston and Montego Bay. Now, you we talked about flying into Montego Bay, and then mm -hmm. of course. Kingston is more like to me, more like their um, New York. But right, mm -hmm. how how close is uh, I was listening to Throp and he was talking about the hospitals. How close is the talking about infrastructure? How close is the nearest hospital? Okay, um, the nearest hospital is approximately forty five minutes away, but that's not the one you would want to go to. Okay, you would you would want to. Probably, if depending on the situation, chance chance getting all the way to Montego Bay, which is going to take you about an hour and 25 to an hour, 45 minutes. Now, right across the street from Throck, there's there's a, a medical facility going up right there in the grill. So at least they could triage you and point you to the proper place even if they couldn't give you all the services, but it's supposed to be a full service medical facility. It's called Omega Medical and it's directly across the street from Travelers. And oh. it is just about to open. They, they're doing the finishing touches. So that's going to make it a lot better in the Negril area. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then, so you've got your access to healthcare, you know, those mm -hmm. of us who are, um, what's the but word? your insurance is no good now. Okay. Your American medical insurance is no good over there. Now it would it would work for a one time catastrophic event. Um example, I had a girlfriend who actually did drive over a cliff and roll several times. And you are going to have to produce a credit card or cash to pay for your care, but once you get back to the States, you can reimburse that money from your insurance company for a one time catastrophic event. But your ongoing medical care is not covered by your American insurance in a foreign country. Now, gosh, how, how is she? Let's pause. I mean, she went to the hospital I mentioned that you don't want to go to, supposedly. And they set her arm in the most horrible looking cast I've ever seen in my life. It looked like a first grader made it as an art project. When she got back to the, it was bad. <laughs> When she got back to the United States, she said she she would do whatever it, it took. She would have it rebroken and reset or whatever. And the doctors took the cast off, looked at it and said, listen, this is not the prettiest cast I've ever seen. But whoever did this did a fantastic job. Everything is properly healed. We don't need to do anything. Wow. Mm hmm. And she's over. She's she's over there now. She's been there for two years straight. Um, She's never left the island during pandemic. Never. She never left it. Just stayed. She, she's a permanent resident. She has a permanent residency and she's using it because I submit to you and I will tell you this and all of your listeners, your COVID health is in better hands in Jamaica than it is here in the United States. I have experienced both. Jamaica is doing a much better job, much better from day one. I can, um, and, and it's interesting because there is a, a new, I think last week, the 
um, U.S. State Department put out a travel warning for Jamaica? Uh, didn't they? Oh. I mean, they, they they made it a three and then they downgraded it to a two. So mm -hmm. that means that they they have they're acknowledging that Jamaica's doing better than they at first said. Right. So, yeah. So that's I think that's where we stand now. I believe we're a two. And it's interesting to me because I know people. Uh, my husband and I have um, both had COVID, um, and I know people. Well, personally, who have had COVID, and I mm -hmm. and I will say to them, be careful going to. <laughs> Be careful going to the hospital. I mean, I, I mean, I just had to say, and even to doctors here in the U.S. Okay, mm -hmm. because um, when my husband was sick, um, his doctor was saying, "Oh, you you can seven days." He was saying, "You you can go back to work. You're fine. You can go back." He could barely stand up. He wasn't eating. He wasn't eating food. He would have to um, rest on his way halfway to the restroom rest for 30 minutes, lay down on the floor and then crawl. This is this is Delta. Mm -hmm. And and then come out and then crawl again and rest. And this would take hours just to go. And this, you know, we had a doctor who was sending him, you know, sending him back to work. It was like, you're fine. You 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 can go back. And it's like, mm -hmm. how? I mean, how? Mm -hmm. Um luckily ones I wouldn't say luckily, but I ended up having um COVID pneumonia and uh, COVID asthma. And <laughs> yeah, I mean, could not breathe. And then um, having, um, now I have post COVID syndrome, which I'm trying to work through. I still have the foggy brain. I still have, uh, which is, hence I, I cut myself with the men. I still have these <laughs> issues. And um, <laughs> It, it's like, well, he was like, well, I'll let him leave him off to so he can um, take care of you because you you can't stay by your, you know, you can't stay by yourself. Mm -hmm. And and I was like, in my foggy brain, I was still, I looked at my husband, we kind of looked at each other, you know, gave each other the look and it was like, you can't take care of me because you, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, cause you, you know you, you're sick. And this whole thing of this American brand, that's what I call it, this American brand, where um, America is the best, everything is wonderful, we have the best healthcare, we have the best of everything, mm -hmm. is absolutely untrue. And so for this alone, we talk about infrastructure, and you talk about infrastructure when you go to other uh, countries, especially Jamaica, when you're weighing that, weigh it in truth, not by what you've idolized as the American nightmare. I'm sorry, American dream. Right. You've idolized mm -hmm. or been told as the American dream or been lied to because you have to put it in real perspective. The other thing is we don't have access. I live downtown. And so there is not a grocery store. I mean, we were just sitting here talking about this last night. There's not a grocery store. The closest one is Union or, or Poplar. But for and it's for everyone, you know, who's 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 downtown. So you don't really have this access. So you have these food deserts. You have all these things um, that that are that are happening throughout the U.S. And we're not growing our own food, so it's being imported from um, Jamaica, Spain, anywhere in Mexico, anywhere they can get it from. And so when you think about infrastructure in your comparing these things what are some of the other things i think that americans may not really realize or, or, or may not know um when they're falsely comparing infrastructure between america and jamaica well um these these are some simple things that you will notice once you come to jamaica one thing is the air quality everybody everybody the, the word they use to describe the air in jamaica is it smells sweet uh, it's a wonderful thing to be somewhere where there's no manufacturing and a whole lot of car exhaust and a pollution, the beautiful, clear running streams. You actually can drink water out of a river. Just, just get a cup and drink it. You know, and it's ice cold. Oh, my goodness, the sky, the vast vistas of the sky, just the beauty. Everything is so green, so beautiful, uncluttered. Um, if you want 
if you want manscapes, I call them like skyscrapers and pretty, pretty views, go to Kingston and, and get a place up in, um, um, oh, what's the name of it? Beverly Hills in Kingston or New Kingston and look at all the gorgeous lights and all the city below you. You get that New York feel. You can have a little of everything, but it's the simple things that you're going to, the food is so fresh and so free of, um, uh, antibiotics and additives and everything. And I'm going to try to put this politely. Your body functions within a few days of being in Jamaica are going to change drastically. And you will notice it in the morning time. Are you following me? <laughs> and when you get back home, you're going to be like, oh, Jesus, I missed that. That was so nice. You know why? Because it's all natural and it's all pure and clean. And your little body is going, it's just, your body is just going to sing. I, I've, I've heard, heard of, um, endorsements from people who have all these different body aches and pains in the U.S. When they come to Jamaica, literally upon landing, it stops. My this doesn't hurt. My that doesn't hurt. My so-and-so feels different over here. It's, it's like the fountain of youth, that place. It seriously is. Wow. Now, if that's not a reason to go to Jamaica, I don't I don't know what I mean. Body functions change because a lot of times we're here taking um, selenium or we're taking, you know, Metamucil, all these other mm -hmm. other things. Um, your body functions have changed. Uh, the water tastes good. Y'all remember? It does. My, it tastes a lot like Memphis water. Really? Uh -huh. It does. I remember my great my great grandmother Pearl lived in Batesville, Mississippi, and when they came and tried to unhook her pump because she had the old pump in the in the backyard, mm -hmm. she was so upset. Mm -hmm. That pump water is the bit. I mean, that old yeah. water. Oh my gosh, with that tin ladle, that is the metal ladle. That is the best in a tin cup. That was the best water in the whole wide world. So you're saying. The water is good. Okay. Of course. Yeah, can I tell you this? Um, I have friends come see me and they stay with me. And when they arrive, they, you know, I try to get a little feel for, okay, well, what time do you like to get up? Do you drink coffee? Uh, are you a breakfast person? You know, I kind of get a feel. So everybody, here they go. Well, I don't sleep well at night and I'm going to get up probably a couple of times. And, you know, my bedroom is on this side of the house and they're way over there. So they wouldn't bother me anyway. But if you hear me rambling around in the middle of the night going to the bathroom, don't be alarmed because I go to the bathroom at two and 6 a.m. every day. All right. So said person who happens to be my cousin um, next morning, it's almost it's going on nine o'clock and I don't hear anything. And I'm. Tipping around the house, trying not to disturb her. And finally, around 10 something, she wakes up and she goes, I didn't get up in the middle of the night to use the bathroom. I slept till 10 o'clock. What time is it? And it's 10 o'clock. What? Especially. <laughs> and every single night, she was there. No drugs needed, no sleeping pills, no nothing. Slept like a baby. A baby. And every single person down to the person. To, and, you know, just it, do you know the value of a good night's sleep? Mm. I mean, just a good night's sleep. Do you know how many people come to see me and they don't want to leave? They think it's some magic in the mattress or whatever. No, it's just, no. It's those tree frogs croaking at night, the rooster crowing in the morning, the dogs barking, just peace. Peace. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, peace. Mm -hmm. So you can, and we're going to add that to the list. You can have a good, good nice sleep. sleep in Jamaica. That's right. Wow. And, and, and you, and that's something that's, that, that's like gold. Some yeah. of the people out there listening to me who they know what I'm talking about. They're just kind of imagining, wow, what was the last time I slept a whole night? Come to Jamaica. Come, Come. to Jamaica. <laughs> I mean, because we are the capital of NyQuil in the, you know, in the U.S. You are, NyQuil, melatonin. I mean, all these other things y'all do. Mm -hmm. We can't mention, you know. I don't know, you know, anything, anything, you know, but yeah. And so all you really need, I'm writing that down. Y'all know I'm taking those, but yeah, all you really need is a good night's sleep. All you really need is a, is, is, is a, 
plane ticket to Jamaica. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. We've forgotten what that is. Body functions. Water is good. The air is sweet. Oh, the air oh, is wow. sweet. The air is sweet. Air is sweet. <laughs> and then your pain just goes away. They all these little mm -hmm. aches and pains and mm -hmm. different things, they just they just disappear. I haven't met anybody who hasn't said their quality of life. You know, I'm talking about the base. See, we we see, let's not talk about the hardwood floors, the granite countertops, and the dishwasher, okay? And the internet being strong and blah blah blah. You get over there and you're gonna find out what's really important when your quality of life changes and and day by day goes by and you feel better and better and younger and younger and you don't quite know what's happening to you at first and then you you figure it out it's just different here fountain of you fountain of you mm -hmm. yeah look at me i'm 70 I'm going on 71 well i told you i didn't believe that so i mean because <laughs> you do not look set now, that was Mm -mm. You do not look at me at all. Mm, thank but you. Not the hard war for floors, the quality of life. Your life just improves because we've gotten um, out of the this, I don't know, our whole psychology is off. I talked to Tasha yesterday about this. Um, and I was listening to a broadcast. I was telling her I was listening to a broadcast with the nomad capitalist. And he was saying when he moved to, um, which of course he loves the Caribbean, but he, he moved to um, one of his homes is in um, Malaysia. My, my, my friend from best friend from college was from Malaysia. Mm -hmm. And so he talked about how when he goes to Malaysia, he doesn't have a car. And a lot of his friends are like, well, why? And he's saying, well, because everything, where everywhere I want to go, I love to walk. He said, my wife and I, we love to walk and I live in a central location and we can walk to wherever we want to go. And then when I don't want to walk, we just get an Uber. And, you know, that can take us wherever we want to go. But he was also saying that when Americans and people from the West come, a lot of the times they want to the Mer you know Mercedes, they want the BMW. They they want to put their kids in private schools. They want to know all of these things. And he's saying, and it was interesting to hear this. You know, what what the Africans call them, Mzungu, right? It was Africa. It was interesting mm -hmm. to hear this other person talk about quality of life from a whole different perspective. Not the red bottoms, not the eyelashes, not the, um, you know, luxury purses, <laughs> not any of those things, but just having a quality of life, improved function, body functions, good night rest, all the things that I told you Misty Memphis is an expert. Did I not tell you that? When I think of her, I think of her on the level. And the reason I'm mentioning nomad capitalists, I think of her on the level of the nomad capitalists because she has years of experience in anything that you want to do in um, the grill, real, especially mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to running a business, starting a business. I mean, people have come to her and talked to her about their business ideas yeah. and, and you, which, you know, that'll be, you know, kind of one of our next uh, things we'll have to talk about business mm -hmm. because um, she comes from this wealth of knowledge and experience. And she's gonna give you the truth. That's just she's just gonna give you the Misty Memphis truth. She's just, she's just gonna give you Misty Memphis one on one. So this is why um, you when you are choosing to go to Jamaica, and I don't care. You know her specialty obviously is the grill, but to me, I don't care where are you going in Jamaica. I don't know. If you should be setting up like a consulting service, but I don't want to give you any more. I don't. I don't want to work there for for finance for finances uh, because I don't want to get tied up with um, taxes. I look. It's it's bad enough. I got to still do taxes over here. I got to get that oh together now. I don't want to get tied up with two tax me. I'm I'm fully retired. My retirement income comes from the U.S. Everything I do is voluntary. I am not interested in business. That's why I'm probably going to be a pretty poor um, 
consultant when it comes to young people who are still in an age group that they want to come to Jamaica and have some kind of livelihood. Mm -hmm. Um, That's a little bit out of my area of expertise, but I'll tell you something that I'm dogmatic about. When foreigners come to the United States, I mean, to Jamaica, from wherever, Canada, the United States, wherever, I find that a lot of them try to circumvent the rules and regulations and downright laws of the country. They uh, feel they have some type of privilege being from elsewhere and coming with all of their money or whatever to start a business and hire some Jamaicans. This is what you're going to always hear from Jamaicans and Americans alike, but they gave somebody a job. You know, somebody's got a job because of them. And that absolves them from everything that they have circumvented and lied about and, and just downright broke the law. So my one thing I'm dogmatic about is if you do come to Jamaica to start a business, please do it legally. And you're going to find that that is not an easy thing to do. To do it really legally, you're going to pay probably more in fees and taxes and permits and stuff than than the business is worth. Mm -hmm. You know, because starting a business anywhere in the world, the rule of thumb is that you're going to lose money for your first three years. So are you, first of all, prepared to finance your business for three years on a nonprofit basis? Because you're not going to open up X, Y, Z, your bar, your restaurant, your club, whatever, and all the money is just going to start rolling in. Nope. Nope. Not going to happen like that. Nowhere in the world. So if you can't afford, you need to do your homework and find out what all the permits and licensure is, how much it costs. It's going to cost you days in offices jumping through hoops of people who have a little bit of attitude about you because they're kind of like, no. And, and, and here's one thing I always want Americans to remember. Nobody cuts Jamaicans a break when they come to America, not right. getting in the country, not coming to visit, not coming to live, not being married to an American and trying to get in and get a green card. Nobody cuts them a break. So don't expect somebody to just be so thrilled that you decided to come to Jamaica and relocate and start your little business. OK, that they're going to hand it to you on a silver platter and you're going to go in there complaining about how difficult it is for you to get all the stuff you need. And you people, please don't ever let that come out of your mouth. <laughs> you, you people, doesn't it? Do you know who I am? <laughs> you, know, you know, do you know what I'm bringing to this country? You ought to be glad I'm over here. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the attitude, you know. But this but this coming over there and cutting these corners and and operating illegally, that's that's my bailiwick. That's something that I really do not, I do not like. So if you're gonna come and you're gonna start a business, please do it the right way. Do it the right way. Mm-hmm. And and have the, the 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 capital that you need in, in order to do it. And just um here in a, in a, in America, we I, we don't necessarily have the whole thing of well, I guess we do. I guess we because <laughs> uh, because I was reading something from John Stewart was talking about Bezos this morning um, in a conversation he had with the Obamas, and he was saying to mm-hmm. um, he was saying um, he said to Bezos, and it was quiet when he said it. He was like, people don't want to just work for you to deliver stuff for rich people. I think sometimes even, you know, and, and he said there was just silence in the room and mm-hmm. said, and then eventually um, Obama says, you know, cause I was kind of a thought, very thoughtful person. He says, you know, John, I agree. And, uh, and that was my Obama personation, but we have this entitlement as Americans and, and, and you know, very much right. So. Here, right? The and, whole here. world should just be thrilled that we even came to visit. Because I'm American. Right. Greatest country in the world. Greatest and country. Then, greatest country. <laughs> oh my gosh. Do that again. Greatest country. I'm American. Greatest country in the world. <laughs> and and then you compound that with providing one person a half a person with a job. I mean, even if it's part time, that's what I mean by half a person. Yeah. Meaning half time, I should say, probably is better. 
it's like we've done some amazing things. Uh -huh, and because hold up, Jamaican and American, Jamaican and American business owners uh, have found out that there are labor laws, but all you have to do is hire several part-time people and you slide under the radar of what you have to do, like giving that person technically two days off a week. A lot of people don't know Jamaicans work a six-day work week, most of them. They wow. get one day off. Uh, but you circumvent that by making them part-time and then therefore they now don't fall under the laws of the full-time employee. It's, it's ways to do things. And, oh. and, and all of this talking about Oh, well, this business, uh, even though they're illegitimate and illegal, they do give Jamaicans a job. Mm -hmm. $60 a week. That's what they make. $60 a week. $240 a month. You try you try living off $240 US a month and see how you're going to do it. Not well. Not well. Not mm -hmm. well at all. And we take those same practices that we have here in the US there because... What do we do here? We work people 20 hours um, a week. And then we, you know, what is it? You can't go over 30 hours or it, or the person consecutive, consecutively mm -hmm. or the person is automatically full time. We, we'll put them right at the 29.5. I mean, we'll put them right as close as you can get so that you're not... Um, you're not having to pay that employee. And, and so we need to retrain reframe go on a spiritual quest i know what we need to do um to get those americanisms and that american way out of our spirits before you go right before you before you go um no matter where you expect uh, expanding to but especially if you're going to expat to jamaica i'm just saying because i don't want to get over there and see you doing that <laughs> i would think as a foreigner as a, since, since you went down the business road, as a foreigner getting ready to establish a business, and I'll just use Jamaica, the first question you need to ask yourself is who is your target audience? Who is it that you're expecting to, um, okay, so let's just pick an example, a bar. You know, you want to open a bar. Who do you expect to come to this bar to drink? Are you targeting um, tourists? You got to let's let's open a martini bar. That's something that doesn't exist in the grill. Let's oh. let's open a martini bar. Oh. And, and we're going to we're going to uh, do martinis and we're going to do martinis uh, that, uh, you know, how the flavored martinis are so popular right now. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're going to do a sorrel martini. We're going to do a, a, a pineapple martini. We're going to do a, a star fruit martini. We're going to, we're going to use the local stuff and we're going to twist it and we're going to open this martini bar. Okay. Let me tell you, Jamaicans probably pretty much not interested in drinking martinis. Now, you know, they may try it, but uh, they're probably not going to be real interested in it. And um, they're going to patronize their own before they patronize you. So that kind of leaves you with the tourist population. Okay. So are you aware that the tourists heavily are not in town only but four months out of the year? So can you make a living with four good months out of the year? Mm. There's a lot for you to think about before you open a business in Jamaica. And I want to say, start with who are, who is your target audience? Who are you trying to serve? Now, let's say you open an auto parts store. Oh yeah. That's going to go over big. And if you can actually get the parts to the country for those automobiles that are having difficult time finding parts, then that's a whole different ball game. They're gonna they, they will patronize you, especially if you can deliver that at a, a decent price, okay. yeah. and put some Jamaicans on the front counter, and start your automobile parts store. So yeah, that's probably going to make it. But that's a difference between two types of businesses. You see. Open, mm -hmm. a hardware, open a hardware store with fair hardware prices, you in the house. Um, I'm just trying to think of some things, you know. So it's going to depend. Personally, I did it the chicken way. I wait until I was ready to fully retire, pull the Social Security, and then I went to Jamaica where I did not have to work at all. To, to me, if I had to go there, it would ruin, at work, it would ruin paradise for me. Mm-hmm. But then yeah. again, you you delay 
your dream until your ass is old. <laughs> Let's just be honest. <laughs> I, I want to go now. I want to go while I'm still young and cute and look good in a two piece. Okay, I, I feel you, girl. Go on and go. You know. <laughs> uh, Look, I'm gonna tell you something. And so that's also one of those top things is you know very important to think about is you know your your income and your housing and your ability to start a business and even just knowing the landscape of the you know the, of the, the business landscape there in in Jamaica I mean it's mm -hmm. you know it's real it's, it's very important to kind of know these things very interesting things that you bring up that we really need to take a moment and consider one of the things that you also mentioned, um, number five, was the friendly nature of the people. We're going to, um, and, you know, just the old uh, South, it, you know, as you kind of mentioned, how we speak to each other, used to speak to each other, love each other, um, mm -hmm. and all of those and things. And now we won't even make eye contact. No, we don't. No, we just, we in our zone. I stay in my lane. You know that I stand in my lane. Stand in my lane. Uh huh. And we don't even speak to each other. You know, I'm, I used to be a cruise girl for a while and until I discovered Jamaica. And it amazed me how I would go on a cruise and see other black people on the ship. And they would, they acted like they didn't want to speak to me. Well, maybe they thought I was white. I don't know. <laughs> but but, but uh, they, just didn't, they didn't want to speak. We don't, we don't speak to each other anymore. Into I mean, something, and some something changed, and it's not a good something. Mm -mm. Something definitely changed, mm -hmm. and I, I don't know if it was the nineties and the drug culture. I don't know what happened, but mm -hmm. at some point we, I think it was the nineties because we eighty eight was a lot different um, when I graduated high school. So I mean, I. I Somewhere in the 90s, something happened. And I'm not quite sure if we can even get it back. But you can't go to Jamaica. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> that, that you can do. All right. So um, that's our top five. Um, and six, would you say um, business, starting a business in Jamaica? Well, definitely retiring in Jamaica has got to be uh, number six for you. That's the bomb. Right. It's the place to retire. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is the place to retire and spend your golden years, if you want to call it that. Yeah. Yeah. It's the place to retire. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we did it. We got top, we got our top six um, <laughs> reasons why. And we even got a Misty 101 lesson in starting a business um, in Jamaica, which hopefully we'll talk more about in another broadcast well yeah we um, can do a whole broadcast on that one on business alone <laughs> on business alone well in wrapping up because our, our time uh we i've had fun i didn't realize we've been here we're, we've covered up the hour already and i know miss mm -hmm. has had some amazing things she's got to get done today although i could sit with her um, and glean from her all day. But in closing, uh, Misty, what what is the you know top thing you would say? Um, maybe it's retire in Memphis, but uh, retire in Memphis. I'm sorry, retire in Jamaica. What's the top thing you would say for to someone if they were thinking about retiring or moving um, to Jamaica? Why Jamaica? What's your top top reason? Would you say? Okay, for me personally, the top thing was the culture. Because um, Jamaica has a, a very interesting culture with a lot of tradition that goes all the way back to Mother Africa. The um, experience as an African-American of having that culture taken from us, beaten out of us, programmed out of us. And then you come to Jamaica and you attend a nine night, for example, when the person has died. Um the African tradition is, and a lot of Jamaicans don't know that it came from this, from Africa, that it takes nine nights for the soul to journey from earth to heaven. 
uh, Jamaicans, a lot of them just know they have a, a big celebration on the ninth night. But the reason behind it is because in Africa, they believed it took nine days, nights for the soul to go from earth to heaven. And um, the Nyabinga drummers, who you just, if you close your eyes, you can't be anywhere else but in a village in Africa. Uh, just so many things about the tradition. They have, they have a culture. They have so many things about their culture. And I've, I've enjoyed learning about their culture since I basically don't have one. Hmm. And that was my number one. And if there's anybody who is of Jamaican heritage listening to this broadcast, then I want you to know I envy you. I envy you and I honor you. You, to me, represent the best of Black people on this planet because you were strong enough to stand the storm and hold on to your roots. And that I admire. Wow. And that is absolutely beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your wisdom and your knowledge with me. I, um, every time I sit with you or, or we talk, I immediately think of my own family. I think of my grandma Pearl. I think of my great grandmother um, Pearl and my grandmother um, Ruth, who taught for 34 years. And this love for Black people, this love for our own people wanting us to prosper and want us to be in good health and wanting us to live life to the fullest on our own terms. And you embody all of that along with your pioneer spirit of having had, had you know, of having worked in the civil rights movement starting at three years old. I mean, this mm -hmm. is such a beautiful and phenomenal journey. And so thank you so much. Thank you so much for all the work. Um, it went smoothly this time. We didn't have technical difficulties. <laughs> just in the beginning. Just in the beginning. That yeah. was it. I will. I definitely will because we got to talk. We got, we got uh, to talk about business in jamaica i was making these notes and mm -hmm. then and, and then we got to talk about what not to do when you come to jamaica that's a whole nother that's um, a whole nother show <laughs> that's a whole nother so we got at least two more shows to go um, okay good. business in jamaica and what not to do when you come to so jamaica. i have to put on lipstick two more times at least two more <laughs> yeah two, two more times at least at least and then that gives you an opportunity to kind of um get your ideas going, which you are so good just on the fly, though. I'm like, you, you're one of those people you can just ask and you 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 are just prepared already. I appreciate you, um, okay. your expertise, your knowledge, and um, just your love for Jamaica. It's so, so refreshing that Black people love Black people wherever we are. All right. Thank you so much, Misty. Thank you. Okay. Right. See you goodbye, soon. everybody. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Thank you. Uh -huh. Well, guys, are you hearing what I'm hearing? I mean, we can go to Jamaica and we can we can actually tap into the fountain of you. Did you hear that? I mean, Mr. Memphis broke it down. You could come to Jamaica and get a good night's sleep. How many of you have not had a good night's sleep in a long time? It's waiting for you in Jamaica. Your body functions. I mean, if you're taking all this other stuff, Pepto Bismol and um, psyllium, it, well, psyllium is good for you, but you're taking all this other stuff um, to try to move stuff, slow move, move fast, move slow. Go to Jamaica. All your body functions. The water is good. I mean, because here our stuff is packed with fluoride and all kinds of stuff. The air is sweet. Your pains go away. So many different things for you that are waiting for you in Jamaica. Have you not been blessed today? I have been so incredibly blessed today by this conversation and by just her love for Jamaica, but her also her love for Black people. 
in Jamaica and you and I in wanting us to go to a place where you can have a higher quality of life and where you can go where you are celebrated and not just tolerated. Ooh, I can't wait for the next installation of this show to be back um, in our expat <laughs> in Paradise series with Misty Memphis. I am excited about this expat um, in Paradise series with Misty Memphis and all the things. And you heard her. Okay, so she's committed to at least two more, if not, maybe not more. But Business in Jamaica is going to be our next show. And then after do after that, we're going to talk about what not to do in Jamaica. Y'all, I'm reading my notes. You see me looking at <laughs> me. I got so many. I got like, I got two pages of notes this time. I think I had three or four last, last time. I mean, she was, she, she was, she was laying it, laying it down. But, and I got a lot of notes in my head. I always rewatch these broadcasts myself and then take notes again. I'm so blessed and so full because I've learned so much. And this is what we have to do, people. We have to connect with each other and support each other. All right, I'm going to leave all of the links to Misty's group below. Amazing. Um, her Capital ca Casual group in the grill. I'm going to leave that along with her Facebook Jamaica group so that you can connect with her and learn about the grill. If you're really interested in going to the grill, interested in going to Jamaica, her group is the group that you want to be um, a part of if you're really interested in the grill. I'm so excited. All right. I think we got everything. <laughs> All right. I'm happy and excited. I'm just like a butterfly um, because there's so much great and beautiful information and so much um, wealth of experiences that Misty Memphis has. And I'm incredibly grateful that she's chosen to share that with you and with me. All right, guys, I love you guys so much. You, 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 baby, you, you are amazing. You're beautiful. You're wonderful. You are loved. And you, you are welcome here. You're always welcome here. Be sure to comment, like, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you'll know and always be notified. You can also um, go and um, um, go out, if you will, if you want to support me even more. Um, share the broadcast, of course. Um, you can purchase my book, Love the New Currency, which is linked um, below. Um, you can join me over on Patreon so that I can continue um, to bring guests just like this, as well as hitting the join button. Uh, right here on your channel and you can share 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 broadcast and go support uh, Misty and her group it's amazing and it's wonderful all right guys there's so many good things for you and many of them trust us trust me in the, are in Jamaica all right see you guys on the next next broadcast I love you guys so much because <laughs> this is Sanal signing off and I'm gonna see you in another video. Listen. Bye-bye, guys.